Maybe see it in presence. I don't know. All right. Well, good morning, Brook Hill United Methodist Church. All right. Welcome to worship here. Those of you joining us online, we welcome you as well. We invite you also to find and light a candle. As we have lit the candles here in the sanctuary, I remembered this week, so there we go. Um, just to remind us all that we are in worship together. Even across the internet waves, we are in worship together, amen? And so, uh, as we uh, look at the welcome and the connection points and all those things that are written down in front of me, uh, I, I will do the best I can to uh, make sure that we get all these announcements correct. Um, ice cream social today. Anybody like ice cream? Yeah, all right. 2 p.m. today, so if you'd like to join us here today, uh, I'd love to meet you all and get to hear some stories. Um, one thing you'll learn about me right away, I'm an Orioles fan, can you tell, you know, see, there it is, all right, so um, we'll just get a chance to share and have, have a little ice cream, and I'm hoping I can talk you all into doing a little bit of a happy dance with me today, all right. Summer fun tonight, 6 p.m. Uh, there's uh, activities outside, and so uh, just come and join us for some fellowship time between 6 and 7 today. Also today, the spotlight will be released. It is uh, with John Hain. And if, is John here to, at this service? No. Okay. So John Hain has celebrated his 90th birthday this week, and so I hope that if you see him or can go ahead and converse with him, wish him a very happy birthday. Um, Pastor Linda's farewell will be next Sunday. Uh, she is stepping down as visitation pastor, and so after both services, you will have a chance to shower love on Pastor Linda, as she has showered love on this congregation for so many years. And so I hope that you will join us for that as well. The Connection Wall is a great place to start for anything. There's a lot of information out there, and it is changing all the time. So I invite you to just kind of check out that Connection Wall, um, and that's a reminder for me to do the same. Uh, there are updates and things that are coming up very, very quickly, and so I invite you to check out that wall. Also, we do have an open position here at Brook Hill United Methodist Church, and that is for a nursery supervisor. We offer nursery care 
for both services, and so it is a requirement of time from about 8.45 to 12.15 every Sunday, uh, and some additional times as well. But if you know of someone who has a heart for our little ones, our zero to four-year-olds, uh, someone who is good with coordinating volunteers to help with that, that is what we're looking for. And so if you could pass their names our way, connect through the office, uh, we can get you a full job description. But we are in search of someone, and so if you know of someone or if you are that person that has a heart for our young people, uh, I invite you to, to consider this position. And so as we open our hearts for all that God has for us today, I invite you to just take one moment of quiet as we just sort of quiet our hearts and listen for what God has for us. And so if you would, let's just take a deep breath in and out. Most gracious and holy God, we thank you that you are always with us, always watching over us, and always guiding us. And so God, we in, invite you today to guide us and strengthen us. We, we want to feel your presence here today in this place. And so we pray that you will pour out your Holy Spirit and bless and strengthen us together as this body of Christ as we worship you in every way. In your name we pray. Amen. I search the world they couldn't feel me. A man's empty praise, the treasures that fade are never enough. And you came along, put me back together. And every design is now satisfied here in.
clap of praise. Have thine own will, Lord. Have thine own will. Thou art the Children's Center, right? Yeah. So I'm looking around, and I don't see any smaller children, but I see a lot of big children. <laughs> okay? And there may be some wonderful children watching today. So we are going to have our children's sermon. And so I want to, um, something that I like, maybe you like, is to create things. Do you ever create things? So here are some things I have. Uh, one time I took, I want to say it was a praise class, art class we had here at church, but I made a little shepherd with a sheep out of clay. That was fun. And, um, and then I found this in my uh, cabin, and my daughter made a cherry holder. It's a cherry plate, and it says she was four years old, and she made that out of clay. And that's kind of cool. We put, used to put cherries on that. And then I have a, a cup that... Uh, my sister actually just gave me it has the initials of the person who made this on a potter's wheel. And then I just had this little pot, and it says, Thou art the potter, I am the clay, to remind me of the passage that we read, we're going to read today. And so I thought about that. Do you know who else likes to create? Well, God likes to create. Think about all the things that God has created. And I'm standing underneath this, so I'm going to step up. How's that? A little better? Okay. And um, so think of all the wonderful things. I was walking across this morning, and there was this beautiful green moth. Maybe you guys know the official name of it. It was about, about this big, and it was just sitting there, and I was afraid someone would run over it. But I picked it up, and it was on my hand, and I'm thinking, wow. You know, God could have made everything alike, but this is different, you know. And so creation is God's and then I love that there's a verse in the Bible when it's translated in the New Living Translation. It talks about you are God's masterpiece. And so a masterpiece is God's very best work. And so when we think of the mountains or the oceans or all kinds of things that God has made, yeah, God, those are masterpieces. But the most amazing thing 
God said, after all the creation was done, he says his creation was very good. And so you and I are part of that creation, and you are very good. You are a masterpiece. You were made for God's good purpose. You, I'm thinking about looking at all of you today, the variety of people and our gifts, we are part of God's creation. And so God is not through with us yet. Some of you say, well, I I don't know. I'm pretty messed up and cracked, right? Okay, but God's still working on us. God is just like a potter molds clay. God is still helping us to be more like Jesus. And so he's going to help each of us. And so I just want to say a little prayer into that. Actually, I was supposed to sing a song. So we're going to sing the song. This is a little song that I was going to sing with the kids, but we can sing it here. Um, It goes to the, I'm a little teapot. You guys remember that? I'm just doing one verse of it. He goes, Randy had to hear this a few times as I practiced it. (laughs) Yeah. So it goes, the Lord is the potter. Wait, wait. Lord is the potter and I am the clay, molding in and making me every single day. When I get all grown up, hear me shout, I'm a child of God, there is no doubt. So let's try that again. Thank you. Ready? The Lord is the potter and I am the clay, molding and making me every single day. When I get all grown up, hear me shout, I belong to God, and there's no doubt. Okay, so let us pray. Dear God, thank you for creating us as your masterpieces. We know that we're a work in progress, that your grace is helping us to grow into the people that you created us to be. You want us to do the good things that you planned for us. Thank you that even when we mess up, you're able to make us new, a new creation in Christ. And we give you thanks. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Dana. I'm going to have that song in my head for the rest of the day. There it is. I'm a little tea. <laughs> I'm sorry that I neglected to introduce myself when I was up here earlier, or, or Pastor Dana. And so for those of you joining us online, those of you who may not know, uh, my name is Pastor Kathy Altman. I am the associate pastor here. And I am honored and thrilled to be a part of this congregation and this body of Christ with my good friend Dana Wirtz, uh, Pastor Dana, excuse me. Um, Randy calls her your eminence, just saying, you know. Uh, And so uh, we are truly blessed to be able to be here and worship together today. And so we wanted to uh, lift up some prayer requests today. Um, you, if those of you who are, uh, I hope uh, all of you are avid prayer warriors, can grab a list that is out in the, uh, on the connection wall there. Um, but a couple of updates. We continue to pray for Loreen Woodard, um, Dana's mom, who is in her final days. And so keep Dana and her family in your prayers at the passing of her mother. Uh, she is still with us, um, but it, it, is, it is imminent. And so uh, we pray for uh, peace yeah, and, and for an easy passing. We also pray for Debbie Thaxton's daughter, Jennifer uh, Kendro, who will be going under a procedure, uh, undergoing a procedure tomorrow. We have some special birthdays, as I mentioned, John Hain, 90 years old, uh, and uh, Debbie Linthicum's sister, Shirley, will be visiting our next service. She is 91 years old today, and so um, we've got a lot of 90-year-olds around, so let's uh, continue as we um, thank God for those times when we can celebrate as we continue as a body of Christ to lift one another up in prayer. That is what it means to be in relationship with each other and with the Almighty. Would you join me in prayer today? Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, Feel me, use me, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Holy and most gracious God, we thank you for your spirit that falls afresh on us each and every day. We thank you for those times of celebration, for anniversaries and for birthdays, for times when we can simply gather together 
as a family of God and fellowship with one another. And Lord, we thank you that as we are coming together as this family of God, that we can lift one another up in prayer as well in those times of trial. And so, Lord, we pray for those who are grieving today. We pray for those who are celebrating difficult anniversaries. We pray for those who are in need of your healing touch. And we pray for those who are just in need of guidance and strength and comfort. Gracious God, we thank you that you are always with us, always guiding us, always protecting us, always watching over us, and always present with us. We are never alone. And so, gracious God, we are so thankful and grateful to you for all that you do and, and all that you are to us. Be with us as your church, as we continue to reach beyond these walls to make a difference in the lives of the members of those in our community. Help us to continue to help meet those needs and do all we can to be your hands and feet in every way. All these things we pray, as your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And so as we segue right into our time of our offering, um, we have several ways that you can give back here at Brook Hill United Methodist Church. Uh, I love the fact that there's so many that I just learned. Uh, you know, that's a really cool QR code that's in that bulletin. I really love that. Um, but there's also uh, a way to text uh, your, your giving. You can hit our website and be guided that way. You can set Brook Hill up as a payee on your uh, personal bank account. But you are helping to make a difference in the lives of our community and beyond. If you look at that connection board, uh, we've got the VI, uh, the uh, sorry, Volunteers in Mission Project that's coming up. We have a blood drive that's coming up. There are so many ways that we are able to give back. And we thank you for your generosity that helps us to finance all the missions and ministries here at Brook Hill United Methodist Church. Obviously, those of you that are here, uh, there's a basket in the back. And so that's the easiest way as well. And so we thank you for your giving today. Finding myself at a loss for words, and the funny thing is, it's okay. The last thing I need is to be heard, but to hear what you would say, word of God speak. Would you pour down my grave, washing my eyes to see your majesty to be still and know that you're in this place? Please let me stay and rest in your holiness. Where I God see? Finding myself in the midst of you, beyond the music, beyond the noise, and all that I need is to be with you and in the quiet. Hear your voice, the word of God speak, which you pour down my brain. Washing my eyes to see your 
Finding myself at a loss for words. And the funny thing is, it's so okay. Let us pray. Most gracious and holy God, we thank you for the gifts that you bestow upon us each and every day. We ask that you use these gifts for the furtherment of your kingdom here on earth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Our scripture today is from two passages from the Old Testament. The first one is Jeremiah 18, 1 through 6. And it says, This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, Can I not do with you, Israel, as this potter does, declares the Lord? Like clay in the hand of the potter, so you are in my hand, Israel. And then from Isaiah 64, 8, Yet you, Lord, are our father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to first thank you all. I have, um, my husband and I have been overwhelmed with um, the prayers and the love. And honestly, I even got a big pot of Louisiana gumbo from one of the families here. And um, since that's my mom's favorite thing to make, that was really special. And um, I, I thank uh, Craig Augustino for that. And so um, I just really bless. So thank you for all your support. Um, my mom has been in a, in a journey of love. She is still with us. My sister is here um, from Boston and is with her this morning, uh, giving me a little time to be with you all today. And um, it's hard, and it's holy, and it's loving. And my mom, last Sunday, I just have to share this, I watched the service on my iPad in the hospital with my mom. My mom was not... Um, she was kind of incoherent. In fact, she kept asking for coffee during the whole service. This was back before she stopped talking. And, um, but when it came to the Lord's Prayer, she stopped and bowed her head and didn't say a word, and she was praying. And so even with everything uh, almost mentally gone, her faith is still there. And so thank you. So I've been thinking about this sermon. We're doing a series called Create. And I want to think about how God uses in the Bible images of creating, like thinking about the artist. And in my hand is a lump of clay. And as I mold this in my hand, it reminds me about the creation of the world. I think about how God breathed into being um, plants and animals, flowers, mountains, butterflies, ladybugs. God said in Genesis at the end, it was very good. Now, I'm going to talk to God one day about mosquitoes, because I still can't figure that one out. <laughs> yeah, but I heard there, it's very good bird food, so there's a purpose for mosquitoes. But yes, what God creates is good. And the same creative spirit that created the world is present in us, as we have the Holy Spirit in us, that those who believe in um, God's at work in that. And each of us has unique gifts and talents. So somebody says, well, you know, some, my gift may be an artist or a musician or maybe I'm good at writing poetry. But you know what? There's all kinds of gifts. Maybe you're the person that's able to be organizational. You can organize anything. Bless you. I need those people in my life. Maybe you're a person who is relational, you're a peacemaker. You're the one that has compassion. You're the one that can help support people. Maybe you're a teacher. Maybe you can help. It's a creation of a different kind. You're not creating a product, an art piece, but you're creating God's work here on earth. 
and we're a part of that creative process. And then think about that. What purpose has God created you for? And we may have lots of purposes. It might be just one thing, okay? Um, yes, I am a pastor, but God has also created me to be a Mimi, a grandmother. God's created me to be a friend. God's created me to be a wife. God works through all kinds of gifts I have, and so I know that my purpose is tied up in God's creative plan, and so are you. And so I love that Jesus said, I come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. And I love this passage. I, I found this is from Martin Luther King Jr., and it talks about um, creation and creating God's life. It says, it's a very common thing to see people wandering into the world looking for life. They never get it. What they get is existence. Existence is something you find. Life is something you create. Existence is a mere raw material from which all life is created. Therefore, if life ever seems worthwhile to you, it will not be because you just found it that way, but because, by God's help, you made it so. Life is not something you just find. Life is something that you create. So God, creator of all life, created us, and God wants to create real meaningful life, not just for us, but for people around us, life that Jesus came to bring. And then I love that God, Holy Spirit's in us creating more. And so I just lost my clay that was here. That's, oh, here it is. And so I, the part is, though, God has all the pieces for good life, but we have to choose. Do we want existence, just be a clay? Or do we want to be a vessel that God can pour love out into this world? We can choose. Let us just pray. Potter God, in this moment, we place our lives in your hands so that the words that we hear and the truth you reveal will form us into the image of Christ. Amen. So Jeremiah was a prophet, and I honestly think he had a harder job than I did. Um, the people of Israel were a mess, okay? There was a time of corruption, injustice, idolatry, and Jeremiah's message was not always well received by the religious leaders. He was actually called the weeping prophet, and so his life was filled with anxiety and conflict and doom. But in the middle of this turmoil, God calls Jeremiah to step away, go down to the potter's house to spend some time because I have a message I want to give you. I don't know about you, but when life gets difficult and I become overwhelmed, okay, and so um, it's time sometimes God calls me to take a walk, to, to step aside, okay, and take time to pause and just be still. God has a message and so sometimes the message comes in things that don't seem related to God at all. It might be, I, I, I've heard stories, somebody will wash dishes and they suddenly think of God washing them away, you know, clean. Or ordinary things that we do, God can speak. So Jesus used this a lot. Jesus always was using ordinary illustrations for people to, to say, oh, God is in the middle of this. What can this teach us about God? And so that is what, God is doing in this passage with Jeremiah. Now, Jeremiah, in that day, things were made out of clay. The ordinary household bowls, cups, dishes. Uh, there was no Tupperware, no. And there was no stainless cookware. Uh, but most things were made, the ordinary things that people use, were made on a potter's wheel. And so the potter actually would be in a house or a structure away from the town or city because um, there was a fire in the furnace, the kill. And so they would, um, the fumes, they would not want that near where people were living. So he had to walk down and go and watch. Now, as Jeremiah went down there, um, he was watching this potter create, and he saw something unusual. Uh, the potter just stopped in the middle of making this pot and he kind of wads the clay up into a ball and starts all over again. And God's saying, I'm showing you something about how I'm working, especially in the people of Israel. 
And so there was something wrong with that clay. It was marred, scripture says, something that it couldn't keep working on it the way it was. Something had to be done over. And I love that the potter doesn't throw the clay away and get some more. But he takes it and he starts to remake it. Who does this potter represent? Well, it tells us that God is the potter. And God knows clay and he knows us. It says that clay is made from dirt and water. And in Genesis, it talks about how God made people. The first man was made out of, humans were out of dirt, and God breathed life into them. So God understands the creative process. So Jeremiah understands that as he watches the potter and relates this creative process, that this is the people of Israel, and they need to be remade. (laughs) They're a mess. And so they need to repent and turn back to God and be placed in the potter's hands, in God's hands, so that God can form them back into a people of God that they need to be. And so as I was preparing for this sermon, I talked to some people that did pottery. Actually, uh, Jill B. Cheston, who many of you know, is taking a pottery class, and I got some ideas about that from her. And so I think there's a lot of things we can learn that as Jeremiah watched the process, that we can learn from that process. So the first step in making a pot is wedging. And wedging is kind of like kneading bread, okay? They take the dough and they push on it and they hit it and they beat on it and, okay, that's wedging. You ever been wedged? You ever had life feel that way? I have lately that I feel like, what is God doing to me? This is a mess. Like, this is hard. It's not easy, okay? And so think about, like, when Jesus was on the earth, he During the beginning of his ministry, he goes and he's baptized, and God says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And what was the next thing that happened? He goes out into the wilderness, and the devil tempts him, okay? Right? And you're probably thinking, well, he's well pleased. Like, Jesus didn't do anything wrong. He's not being punished. But this is life, and we sometimes things happen. We don't cause them, but they're just hard things that we go through. But God can bring good out of those things, even when it's hard. You know, sometimes things that happen to us that are bad have to do with our bad choices. We do have consequences if we do things that are wrong and hurtful and harmful. On the other hand, we can just suffer because bad things happen. And in that process, we can trust that God is working even when someone's diagnosed with cancer, even when we lose our job, Even when a relationship's broken, even when those things happen, we didn't cause them, God's not punishing us, but even there, God can use it in our lives for good. Now, some of you may know that my mother was rushed to the hospital recently with dangerously low blood pressure, and I was told at that time she would only live maybe a day. And so even... um, I knew that health challenges had been happening, and we knew something bad was going on in her body. But even at that time, God was still speaking to me. He was still working in me. So the morning after she went to the hospital, I I have two jars. I have a joy jar and a scripture jar. Now, I know we need to do in-depth Bible study, and I do try to do that. But you ever have a day when you can't? You're just overwhelmed? But I at least pick one joy, a piece of paper out of my joy jar, And there's something that I have happened in the last year that gave me joy, and I write it on the paper. And then I pick a scripture that is out of this whole jar. It came from a woman's retreat. Some of you remember that. I still have my same jar, and I reuse it uh, full of scriptures. So that morning, out of all the scriptures I could have picked, um, I picked this one, Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. And the joy paper was mom. I picked her name out of all the pieces I could have picked. So in the middle of the wedging, (laughs) God was speaking, and he was saying, I'm going to work something good out of these hard things, beautiful things, peaceful things, loving things. And after the wedging, then there's the centering. The clay is centered firmly on the wheel, and when the clay is centered on the wheel, it almost seems like it's standing still. It doesn't move. It's just spinning, but it does seems very still, almost like when our life is centered on God, there's peace. And so I love Psalm 46.10, be still and know that I am God. 
You know, when we're not centered on God, just like clay, when it's not centered, it wobbles all over the place. Our life wobbles. It's out of sorts. We become distracted, discouraged, worried. And we need to be still and let God center us in what matters, in the presence of God. And then there's the opening. So this thing's going around this clay, and all of a sudden the person who's a potter will take do two things. One, there's the um, outside pressure from the right hand that's pushing in, and then the inside, the other hand, you push out. So you're putting this balance, and it makes the sides go up. And I thought about how that's also like our journey. Sometimes the outside influences are overwhelming, okay? You know, job, work, family, um, all kinds of things. And so if the inside pressure, which to me represents God's hand, if we're not centering ourselves in God, then we're, we don't have that pressure, we collapse, right? That's what happens with a pot. If you have too much pressure, it falls apart. So we need to have ourselves, God's working in our lives so that God will balance. Instead of collapsing and destroying, it is created. God makes something useful. And then there's the waiting. People want to skip the waiting. Honestly, I thought about Jeremiah. Nothing was fast back then. There was no microwaves, no McDonald's. There was no fast food, no, my, uh, uh, no Twitter. You know, everything took a while. Really, people were farmers. Things had to grow before you ate them, and you had to harvest them, and you had to cook them a long time. And um, I know I get nervous when it takes too long for my hoppy, coffee to heat up, you know, in the microwave. And I thought about that waiting time. A, a pot has to wait and totally dry. It might take days before it can even be put in the fire. Oh, we hate waiting, right? But that's the time of growth. And God knows what we need. And the waiting might be a time of God preparing us for what we need for the future. And so just to be in that time of trusting God and patient um, is important. And finally comes the baking. Oh, my. Ancient potters would bake in a kill, a special furnace that would be kind of um, over 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit, so very hot. And then they would heat it up, and then they would take it out, and they would glaze it, put the paint on, the colors on, and then they would stick it back in the oven and bake it some more. But that was important, even though the idea of being in the fire doesn't sound nice, but that's what brought the true colors out. That's what made it strong, made it endure, to be able to endure. And so sometimes our lives feel like we're in the fire. We're in trials that just feel overwhelming. But God is with us in that fire. God is, we're not alone. And God's creative process is not easy. It doesn't happen quick. But God wants to make each of us masterpieces. And so it's a process. Again, we need to stay in the potter's hands. And why is that important? Well, God created us first for a purpose. Like I said, well, we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us a long time ago. The potter created useful vessels, not just something pretty to put on the shelf. In the same way, God created you and I for a purpose. Each of us has gifts to be used for building up the body of Christ. The clay relies on the potter to decide what their purpose is. Now, if we think of this as a spiritual process, it means we trust God, that God knows what we need most. Now, but that's not how most of us are. Most of us want to tell God what we want to do, and we want God to bless it. Okay, so it'd be like this. Okay, so you got the clay. God says, I'm making a beautiful vase to be whole flowers. Oh, no, God, I don't want to be a vase. Vases are boring. You just hold flowers until they die, right? Like, yeah, I want to be a punch bowl. That's what I want. I want to be the center of the party. I want, like, people, like, to be around me all the time, like, refilling their little red cups. That's what I want. <laughs> and God's like, no, you don't. You think you do, but that's not really what you need to be. And so do we trust God to help us be formed into the purpose that we, God knows we need to be? And then we were created from brokenness. Jeremiah observed that the potter took the marred clay and started over again to form it. For some reason, the clay wouldn't cooperate. Maybe there were air bubbles. Maybe there were impurities that needed to be removed. Maybe it was too dry or wet. We don't know what his problem was, but something was wrong. 
And the people of Israel, they were marred by sin and corruption, but God didn't give up on them. If they repented and turned from their ways, God says, I will form you again. There's hope. Now, when we think of the saints of the Bible, some of those famous people we read about and say, oh, yeah, those are the people that were followers of God. Well, here, listen to this. They were all kind of crackpots, honestly. <laughs> Noah got drunk. Abraham lied about his wife. Sarah laughed at God. Jacob was a deceiver. Moses murdered an Egyptian. Rahab was a harlot. Samson had serious problem with lust. David was adulterer and murderer. And Solomon had 700 wives. I'm sorry, I can't get over that one. <laughs> 700? Oh my. And then Elijah struggled with depression. Jonah ran away from God. Peter denied Christ. Paul persecuted Christians. Why in the world would God use crackpots? 2 Corinthians 4, 7, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. When God works in a crack pot, we see God at work and God gets the glory. There is hope. We can't fix ourselves, but God can fix and repair and restore. Um, and we have that hope because God's trying to create us in Christ's image. And we all who are unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit, from 2 Corinthians. Together we're being created as disciples who make disciples, who live in love like Jesus. That's our purpose statement as a church, and it's really true. We are often the only Jesus people see. Okay, I get that God is the potter, and we're the clay, but you say, I'm a long way from being like Jesus. It's a process, people. It takes time. But if we stay in the potter's hands, God promises he'll complete the process. From Philippians, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. And therefore, if anyone is in Christ, a new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. Take heart, friends. God's still working on us. I'm sorry, all I could hear last night was the second verse from my favorite song from Pastor Gary Hicks. And it says, My God has a chisel. He's shaping me. My God has a furnace. He's molding me. He is faithful. And he'll always be. The process of creating meaningful life is not easy. It has sad parts, beautiful parts loving parts. We need to just let go of the if-only moments, the regrets, the bitterness. Let us grasp um, God, as God's in the middle, and not be worried about the what-if moments, the fear and anxiety over the future, but to say, I'm going to stay in God's hands, willing to be transformed, willing to let God create in me a clean heart, a willing spirit, willing to create loving relationships, willing to use my gifts in ministry, willing, thy will be done. It's not too late. God is able to do more than we can ask or think if we just trust in God's creative process. It's a process of love. Are you willing? You can just exist, or God can process and make you into a vessel that can be used by God. I want you to say this with me. It's a prayer from Psalm 51. If you could just repeat after me. Create in me a pure heart. O oh God. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. God has a plan to create you as a masterpiece of love and faithfulness. I want you to watch this video because I think this is what God wants you to take away today. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are all works in your hands. You 
have a plan for our lives. A purpose. A future. You promise you won't leave us. And when we face the tests and trials, you are there. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Lord God, please have your way in us. I pray, for the, I pray this for those who are listening to this right now. Lord, help us to be clay in your hands. Make us vessels for the display of your glory. O oh God, conform us more and more into the image of Jesus. Enable us to see ourselves from your eyes, part of your very good creation. Mold and form our lives so that we might be useful to you cooperate with you in creating the abundant life for which Jesus died to give us. We place our lives, our families, and our world in your hands, Potter God. We yield our will to your loving touch. We say yes to using our gifts for your purposes. We confess our brokenness and our willful sin and trust in your forgiving love to transform even us. Let us not settle for mere existence, but take hold of the life that's truly life, a life that creates hope, creates loving community, creates true joy. Oh, let it be so. In Jesus' name, amen. You are the glorious Christ. The greatest of all delights. Your power is unequal. Your love beyond all eyes. No greater sacrifice than when you lay down your life. We join the song of angels who praise you day and night. Glorious God. As you go forth, I know being on the potter's wheel is tough, and some of you are really going through it, but know that you're in God's hands, and God will use you in the middle to bring good things out of whatever you're going through. So know that you're loved, that you are a masterpiece, because you have the Holy Spirit in you that is God's creative spirit. Go forth with hope and joy and great love. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.